Hi guys, uh, this is David Jokes here and uh, so, um, so starting your Factor 3 fitness program is a really important thing we need to consider and of course this is this whole thing about being stable and core stability. Um, so we're going to do a brief little uh, lesson here in real core strength. Uh, we hear a lot being talked about it, but it's very, very poorly understood, I find. So hopefully I can sh uh, shed some light on it. Quite a few years ago, we developed an acronym, and the acronym is SAM. And SAM stands for Stabilize First, Activate the Target Muscle Second, and then lastly, you move. M and SAM is for move. So when we look at stability, it's not only core stability, but it's shoulder girdle stability. Stability up in the shoulder girdle here, it's stability in uh, the pelvic region as well. So we think about core, well, what is, what is more core than the pelvic floor? In fact, if you look at your, uh, your anatomy chart, you see that uh, the actual mechanical center of gravity is right here through your sacrum, right? This little bone, this, uh, the tailbone on the human being. That's where center, there are mechanical center of gravity should be. But for most of the population, this area is actually quite weak and quite inhibited, and we're really tight up here. So center of gravity for a lot of folks actually ends up being up in the shoulder girdle because you walk around like this with this protracted and elevated shoulder girdle. So, we look at SAM, this is something you do with every exercise, so think about this. And it's really important because we're going to allude to it as we go through the instructional videos, but we're not going go to go into, into the depth that we are right now. So please pay attention, take notes if you, if you must. Alright, so stabilize. So the stability we're looking for in real core development, and we start at the base of the pelvic floor. This is, my, my, this is the region, my bladder and rectum muscles. This is my, the, the, uh, the webbing on the inside of the pelvic floor. And when you pull up in the pelvic floor musculature, women would call this a Kegel exercise. I'm not sure what guys would call it. <laughs> you, you can post it on the forum. Just keep it PG. Um, when you tighten on the, the bladder and rectum muscles, they actually elevate up and they actually create a bit of a vacuum. The cool thing about that, that action is actually the secondary uh, reaction. So the pelvic floor braces, it kind of grabs the sacrum, holds it in place very tautly. Then the secondary co-contraction, or the next thing that happens, is, is a, a, mus a musculature called the multifidus, which are intersegmental stabilizers. Okay, I'm using the, so not to confuse you, um, have you ever seen a picture of a spine and you have the base of the body of the spine, right? And then you have the two wings that stick out, well they're called transverse processes. And they're actually connected to each other all the way down the length of the spine by a series of muscles called multifidi. And the multifidi actually pull the spine down, they kind of anchor it, and they give it that spine, that little bit of wonderful stability in this very small range. Well, when the pelvic floor fires, when you pull up in the, in the bladder and rectum muscles, there's a co-contraction of the multifidus. And the multifidus will actually pull the spine down and anchor it, so all of a sudden I got this beautiful anchoring from the pelvis coming up, the multifidus coming down, and all the energy is being drawn to the middle of the body. It's such a beautiful thing to actually have happen because it centers everything. So, S and SAM is stabilized, right? So tighten the pelvic floor, right? The core muscle, muscles are firing and the muscles along the length of the spine are firing, are firing, transmitting all that wonderful stress back down to the hips. The second part in stability is shoulders back and down. So we're getting into the shoulder girdle, rhomboids, or tater cuff, right? All these per periscopular muscles, we want to draw this thing into place and keep it neutral. So if I'm pressing and pulling and curling and do whatever the activity is, I want these shoulders to be in a very neutral spin pivot position, so I'm not banging away, banging away at my shoulder joint. So, sh so knees soft, core tight, shoulders back and down. Knees soft, low center of gravity, core tight, brace it, pelvic floor, multifidus, shoulders back and down, bringing the upper body back into neutral. Stabilize before you do anything. Right. Second part is activate. So what am I training? Well, if I'm training my, my glutes, like one of the exercises we'll be coming up with is a split lunge. And I'm asking you to flex your glutes. Well, I'm not asking you just to lift your leg up and down and you move, go through the motion hoping your glutes will get involved. The A and SAM says specifically we must contract the target muscle before we initiate the movement. Right? Otherwise, we're going to have a secondary muscles or, or a more dominant musculature in the area uh, uh, taking over for the weaker one that we're trying to develop. And if you get a weaker body part, it's not going to want to jump in. The brain will not elicit that response. Right? So activate the target muscle. And if you're having trouble, stop, put the weights down, put your hand on the muscle and flex it a couple times so you get that feeling, that kinesthetic awareness, brain and muscle, and then go through the motions and make it work. But so the A and SAM is activate. Think, poke, palpate, focus, flex, know what the hell you're training, and turn it on before you start moving. And the last thing you do, of course, is what? Move. And we'll go over more of, that, more of the aspects of movement, what that really looks like, because most movements are actually much smaller than they appear. So, uh, so a good example about movement, if my knees are soft, my core are tight, my shoulders back and down, and I've, I've got, I'm grasping a dumbbell, if I flex my bicep that's now stabilized by the shoulder, 
And as I flex my bicep, it lifts my forearm for me. Not if I lift the weight do my biceps flex. Now, yes, of course they will because the arm wouldn't close. However, to allocate most of the stress of the vast majority of stress in that bicep and to make that muscle work very hard, very efficiently all the time, I always fire it first or flex it first and let that bicep do the work. So that's the, that's the, the activation part. The activation will make the movement occur. And again, we'll get more into the actual movement patterns as we go through the, the instructional videos. So extraordinary thing, the SAM thing, stabilize, activate, immobilize. It'll be the key to your success, the absolute key to your success. It's a hierarchical way of thinking, systematic, the brain loves a pattern, so get Sam into your head, get Sam into your routine, and you're going to be astounded at what's going to happen for you as you go through the program.